Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here and welcome back to Great Engineers and this is the final one, uh, episode 6 of 6, I really can't believe we've gotten here already. Uh, but don't despair because I'm still going to be here every week with uh, weekly videos, well twice weekly videos, and uh, I've got loads and loads of ideas to do before Christmas, so uh, there's plenty of videos still to come. But yep, yeah, last episode then, this one, well I've saved probably the best till last, uh, you know, some people probably disagree, but uh, yep, yeah, Sir Nigel Gresley, um, probably the most famous locomotive designer of them all. And uh, here's a little bit of info about him then before we get started. So he was born Herbert Nigel Gresley on the 19th of June 1876. And as I said, he became probably the greatest British railway engineer in history. Born in Scotland but raised in Derby, he served an apprenticeship at Crew Works and also gained experience at the L&YR, which is of course the Lancashire and Yorkshire Railway. He first became Chief Mechanical Engineer in 1911 on the GNR, the Great Northern Railway, after Henry Ivatt's retirement. Several years later, during the grouping of 1923, he became the first Chief Mechanical Engineer of the uh, LNER, and during this time he designed countless classic locomotives, uh, including the Flying Scotsman of the A3 class and the Mallard of the A4 class, and of course there were many, many more um, that he designed. He died sadly at the age of 64 in April 1941 and was succeeded by Edward Thompson. I think that's where everybody boos normally. But uh, yeah, that's a little bit about Sir Nigel Gresley. I've got loads of his engines to show you today, uh, some of the real uh, classics. Uh, so let's get started then with the first one from 1922. And uh, This is one of his very earliest locomotives. Uh, it's of course an A3, or at least it became an A3. Uh, during its lifetime. This one's Book Law, um, beautiful apple green Pacific as you can see there and uh, if I get close I can tell you the running number that is 2599 and it's a fantastic locomotive I've just managed to repair it because a lot of bits dropped off it in its box but she's got a mega rake of teak coaches I've not shown this big rake before and uh, this is three six seven eight coaches on there so it's a really big load for her but I'm hoping she'll manage uh, I'll tell you all about the class in just a moment but first let me grab these points uh, it's those two and that one. And I'm going to head over to the controls then and I'll get her started for you. Uh, this is the A3. That is a lot of coaches. Anyway, I need her on the middle line, sorry, the very inner line. So what I'm going to do is just change these points as she approaches and uh, try and get her onto there. So everybody, fingers crossed. All right, that's the loco. Now the coaches have got to do it. Oh, quite well behaved. I'm pleasantly surprised. Not quite there yet, though. Yep. Okay. And onto the inner line then. One more set of points. And here they are, so let me just change those very quick. And fingers crossed again, and once she's done this, she's where we need her to be, so... Yep, looking good so far. Gosh, it is lovely, isn't it, just to run a big rake of teaks like this. Alright, well, that looks good. Here's the info I promised then on the A3. So as I said then, the A3 was originally introduced in 1922 and it was actually Gresley's first Pacific and in fact it was the first Pacific ever to run in Britain. The class actually started life as the Class A1 but they were altered in order to support higher boiler pressures and updated Walshirt's valve gear and uh, these changes among a few others uh, led to the reclassification of the class into the A3s. Before Gresley's A4, the A3 actually held the world record for the world's fastest steam locomotive at 108 miles an hour in 1935, and the record still actually stands, but as the world's fastest unstreamlined locomotive. Of a total of 79 engines produced, only one survives in preservation, sadly, and uh, that one is, of course, the very famous 4472, the Flying Scotsman.
Okay, I'm going to stop Book Lord just here then, and of course she'll be running once again in a minute or two. But first of all, let's go and check out the next loco of the day, uh, which is one of Gresley's few freight locomotives. And I'm skipping forward a few years now to 1926 so that I can show you this loco. Uh, it's an 060 and a Class J39, and I'll try and see the running number. It's 64967. And uh, I think it's a really, really smart little locomotive, to be honest. And uh, I hope you'll enjoy seeing her running as well, little Backman one there. Uh, she's got some, well, she's got my new rake of ocean wagons, which I'm just uh, trialling, really, just to see how they look. And uh, hopefully they'll look quite good with her. So without any further ado, I'm going to get these points open. There we go. And uh, I do want her onto the middle line, so uh, I'll have to do that in a moment. But for now, let's see if she'll run. Uh, hopefully she will, she did yesterday. And uh, yeah, let's give it a try. Lovely performance from the J39 there. I thought I'd just film her as she came underneath the footbridge. But yeah, let me go and change those points then and get her onto that middle line. Right, so I've slowed her down a little bit. Just need to change these points. Oh, can't quite reach that. There we go. And let's see how these ocean wagons do then. I do love the look of them. They are old wagons, they're not that detailed, but to me, I think they just look great in a big rig like that. Right, here's some info on the class then. So it was introduced in 1926 and intended for sort of medium freight work, though in reality the class did carry out passenger duties as well. And a characteristic of the class was actually their large driving wheels, which did allow them to suit both of these uh, different types of duties. 289 were produced over a total of five years, and luckily all of them survived into the BR period, where they continued to work there. Uh, but sadly none of them survived that period, and they were all scrapped after their withdrawal in 1959, sadly. Uh, but this is a really photogenic model, it really is a beautiful thing to film, so I hope you enjoy watching her, and uh, yep, I'll leave her running for a second longer. Alright, that should just about do it for now then, I'll slow her down there, bring her to a stop for you. And there's a little close up of her, the J39, I really do like this one. And I've had a few requests to uh, review this one, so I will be doing that at some point. But for now, let's move on to the third loco of the day, which is another one of my uh, real favourites. So this beautiful class was from 1927, and I might be right in thinking that these were the only 440s that Gresley designed. And uh, this is, of course, the D49, or the Hunt class, uh, a gorgeous LNER uh, 440 there, as you can see, number 238, and uh, it's got the name of Burton, I believe. And uh, she's just got four Pullman coaches, uh, not a massive load for her, but I'm hoping they'll look really, really nice on the back of her. So without any further ado, I'm going to get that point open, and I'll start her running for you. So she's exactly where she wants to be in terms of on the right line, so I'm just going to get straight on with running her and uh, telling you a bit about the class. But here she goes, let's hope she gets out of that point all right. Uh, the D49. A silent runner, as you can hear it. A really, really quiet one. All right, here we go then. So the class entered service in 1927 and they were intended for medium passenger duties. And for their size, the class actually did have quite high tractive effort but they never completely superseded the NER locomotives that they replaced. However, D49's built after 1932 had rotary cam poppet valve gear, which is a mouthful, but apparently these ones uh, gave up remarkably good performances um, compared with the originals. In total, 76 of the class were built between 1927 and 1935, and only one was preserved.
Well, that's the first three locos looked at then anyway, and I hope you're all enjoying it so far. But uh, yeah, let's have a little running session now then with these first three. So let's start the J39 up again. Gorgeous loco, and uh, of course Booklore as well, the A3. So there she goes. Okay, now let's do a running session. Oh yes, there's something marvellous about Gresley's engines, isn't there? I just love them. D49 is gorgeous as well. And uh, you might not know, but I'm a, a real sucker for 440s, so uh, that's why I'm always going on about them so much. I love them, I don't know why. Yeah, lots of fun. Gosh, yeah, I'm really pleased I got those extra teaks because it just looks marvellous when there's loads of them, you know what I mean? <laughs> and there's the uh, D49 again. She's actually running on DCC and, uh, yep, she's very good for it as well, very smooth. Alright then, well that should just about do it for this little running session. I'm going to put all these back into their sidings again off camera, like I normally do. And uh, when I come back, I'll be ready to show you the final three locos of the day. And uh, they really are superb ones, so don't go anywhere and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've popped everything back into its sidings and I've actually taken two of the teak coaches off the end of the A3. And uh, I'll show you why that is later on, but I just needed to make some space. But for now we're moving on to 1934, onto this locomotive, which is a 282, and uh, it's a P2, Gresley's P2. Uh, a lovely locomotive, number 2001, and uh, as you can see back there, she's got some various uh, wagons, uh, open wagons there, some of them have got stones in them. Uh, but she's got two sidings full, so she's going to have to come out of there and then reverse back in to pick up the rest. So let me just grab those points. And if I can, I'll turn the sound on, because this loco does have sound. So let me just try and do that. Now let's give her a whistle then, see what that sounds like. And she's not very good on these points, because she's a very big loco. But we'll give her a try, see what happens. No, as you can see, didn't like that very much, so I'm just going to give her a push, see what happens. So we can get her to go again, maybe. Here we go, let's try again, see how this naughty engine is going to work. <laughs> right, let me throw her into reverse now then. And uh, just change this point and pick up the rest. There we go. There we go. Hopefully it's got those. Uh, forwards again then, see if this works. A bit 
of a whistle there. Well, she seems to have got them. So, uh, yep, yeah, here's a bit of info then about the P2. Introduced in 1934, the P2 wasn't actually intended for freight like I've got on it today. Uh, instead, it was designed for heavy express trains up in Scotland. And as a result, the class were given Scottish names, and this one, number 2001, having the name Cock of the North, uh, was the first of the class, in fact. In terms of performance, the locomotives were reportedly good, but not remarkable, and uh, only six were built over the two-year period. After Gresley's death in 1941, Edward Thompson rebuilt the locomotives into A2s, which were actually Pacifics, so in doing so, he lost them their unique 282 appearance, and many were really disappointed with that. And uh, I think a lot of people still resent him for that change as well. Sadly, none of the A2s that the P2 became were preserved, and all were withdrawn and scrapped during the early 1960s. Here we go then, I'm just going to slow her down and bring her to a stop. I think just there will be about right, and I'm also going to turn this sound off. There we go. And uh, there's a little close-up of the engine then, a really beautiful uh, 282, that one. Uh, Cock of the North. And she'll be running, as always, in just a second, but I've got a couple more engines... Oh. <laughs> okay. No, I didn't tell her to do that, but that was odd. Yeah, as I was saying, there's a couple more engines to show you, so if she can bear to have the limelight taken off her for a moment, uh, let's go and check those out. Okay, and this one's from the following year, 1935, and it's probably Gresley's most famous class of locomotive. Of course, it's the beautiful A4, and this one's Mallard, uh, the most famous of them all, of course. But it is in the BR Green livery, with its running number 60022, um, but yeah, it is a beautiful model this one, I really do love it, and she's got quite a big rake of blood and custard coaches, but it isn't a complete rake, because the other two are behind the other teaks, which is why I've had to move a couple of them out of the way. So what I'm going to do is get her out of that siding, where she is now, and uh, get her to pick up those final two coaches, which should make her up to a rake of eight. So let me just grab that point then, there's that one, and let's get her started, shall we? Okay, and I've just got to get her past this junction there, and I'll just change the points. Oh, not got quite far enough there, but that'll be fine. Okay, and let's send her back in the opposite direction then to pick up those coaches, and hopefully this is going to work. There we go. Now, these are generally quite reliable coaches, so Hopefully they're not going to derail on me. Almost there. Okay, hopefully they've coupled then. Let's go forwards again and see. Yep, yeah, looks good to me. Let me give her a bit more juice then and bring her around. Yep, yeah, perfect. Okay, let's get her onto that middle line then. And it's these two sets of points here, but they've already been changed because she's been running on the other line. So, yeah, that looks good. Let me speed her up a little bit more. And let's, well, I'll give you a bit of info about the A4 then. And uh, it's a really interesting class, this one. All right, let's do it. The A4, or specifically Mallard, is one of Britain's most famous locomotives. Uh, and it's actually known as the world's very fastest. Introduced by Gresley in 1935, the class was based on the earlier A1 and was technically quite similar to it. They were intended to run passenger services between London and Newcastle in less than four hours and were actually able to complete such journeys far quicker than expected. A total of 35 were produced between 1935 and 1938, though one was destroyed during World War II, after which the class were renumbered from 1 to 34. A healthy six have been preserved and they can still be seen running today at various railways.
Okay, I'm going to let her have a little rest about there, I think. There's a close-up of her, and she'll be running in just a second with the, the other two, uh, but I'm going to get her running really, really fast, uh, just because she's the world's fastest locomotive, of course. But yep, yeah, that's it then. We're all done. One more loco to look at. Let me go and show it to you. And this is the last loco of the day, and it was also the last locomotive that Gresley ever designed. This is the V2, and it's a 262, or Prairie, locomotive. And this one is in BR Green, but the running number is 60903. And she's going to be pulling some freight. Uh, in real life, they would have pulled mail and parcels, I think. But she's got some McVitie's and uh, some Kellogg's vans, but you can't really see them all that well, but you will do later. So not quite correct, but uh, a little bit more tasty, I think you'll agree. So I'll just open that point for you there, and I'll go to the controls and get her started. So Gresley produced the V2 in 1936 in order for them to run express goods trains. The class was quite unusual since they had the 262 prairie wheel configuration, uh, which was an arrangement that hadn't really seen very much experimentation in the past, in, the, in Great Britain at least. Nonetheless, the class became well known and also successful for pulling trains called the Green Arrows, which were dedicated to parcel delivery. The V2 was the last class to be designed by Gresley, and 184 were produced, and some even after his death. One only survives in preservation though, and that was the first of the class, number 4471, Green Arrow. Right, that's it then. I'm going to have one last running session with this lot then. Let's start the Mallard and she's going to be going at full speed now. Um, at a real express passenger speed. Uh, the world's fastest steam train of course. Uh, let's get that P2 started again. Give her a whistle then. And off she goes, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. Better start that time. And that's it. Let's have a session then. And I've got them all going the same direction for a change. But yep, the Mallard's really flying along. But yep, you've seen all of them now, so do let me know which one was your favourite. I'll put a little poll out for you so that you can answer. There's the V2 trailing behind there. But yeah, some wonderful locos from Gresley, so. Yeah, it's a, not an easy choice, but we'll see which one comes out on top. I think I can guess. I think it might be this one. <laughs> Don't often have locos going as quick as that though, so that's quite interesting. And uh, the V2 is uh, just creeping along there. But quite quick, all the same. I don't know where the P2 is. There she is. <laughs> Not a bad loco that. Quite a nice big uh, consist there. There's the V2 creeping along again. <laughs> She's got strange wheels, has she? If you look, you can see they're like white on the inside. It's very odd. But, uh, yep. Never mind. There goes 
from that lot again. Gosh, she's lapping them every couple of laps. Incredible the speed it goes. And there we go. Well, good fun anyway. Lots of engines running at silly speeds, that's what we all like. Well, that should just about do it for this episode of Great Engineers, or in fact, Great Engineers as a whole, it's all done now. That's all six finished. Uh, thank you all for watching, you're all wonderful people for sticking with it for this long, and I hope you did enjoy it as well. And uh, if you did, stick around because I've got lots more videos to come before Christmas, all sorts of ideas to get done. And I'm really looking forward to getting all that uh, sorted and uploaded for you, so I hope you enjoyed that. But for now, thank you very much for your support with this series. If you did like it, as I say, let me know in the comments, or leave a like if you'd like to. And you can also check out the Facebook or Twitter pages if you like, and they're at facebook.com forward slash Sam's Trains, or twitter.com forward slash Sam's Trains. It would be lovely to see you on there, but for now, thank you very much for watching, as always. And... Uh, that's it from Great Engineers, no more of that, but uh, on to bigger and better things hopefully, so yeah, cheers everybody, see you soon.